Hi, my name is James Clark, and this is a presentation prepared for the e-learning showcase at King's College London to be held on the 11th of July 2013. I'm a lecturer in human physiology and I work uh, within the Centre of Human Aerospace Physiological Sciences at King's College London um, and we run a number of um, teaching programs. We teach modules and courses in human uh, and applied physiology and these courses range from first year um, BSc and MBBS, that's the medical degree, all the way up to MSc programs and of course PhD programs. Um, the one problem we have in our teaching, uh, and it's not a, a unique uh, problem with King's College, is that there are no core modules within a BSc or an MSc that covers data capture and analysis that would be relevant to all courses and programs. So a student in their first or second year, for instance, couldn't do a uh, course on data capture and then understand all data capture systems from that moment on. It's just not feasible to run such a program. Um, of course, not all modules and courses include full details on how to, so how do you uh, analyze data, how do you use the software you're supposed to use, how does the software integrate with um, word processing applications, spreadsheets, and things like that. A lot of the time uh, in physiological sciences, for certain, there are some software programs that are just so specific to a particular measurement um, that you'd never use them again, and it's hard to spend time teaching these within a uh, research or a teaching program. Um, and it happens because of these problems that many students reach their final year without ever having carried out a practical class from start to finish. Um, this is a problem again with many universities, not just King's College, and it's something that we are trying to address. And of course, it goes without saying that all students are very different and have very varying levels of IT literacy. Um, in the day and age where everyone's on Facebook and using iPads to send their emails, it's surprising how few of them understand uh, basic Windows applications. So the problem, and certainly the problem associated with my research and my teaching modules, is that our research-led teaching approach invariably ends up using technologies, using certainly software, computer appliances, which have not been encountered before by students when they come to try and use them in the laboratory or in the classroom. Of course, we expect students to acquire data, and we expect them to do a laboratory practical or a field trip, and we expect them to acquire data and use that data for their write-ups. And most of the analysing is done offline, which means they're at home, they were not on campus, and they don't necessarily have access um, to their lecturers or to their colleagues to discuss things. Students often don't have the time during these laboratory sessions to actually learn enough about the software they're using, the analysis tools they need to use to actually then go offline and use them to their full advantage. Um, this is probably a problem that's encountered in lots of laboratories because the laboratory time is limited and therefore the time is taken carrying out the practical and not necessarily remembering how it's set up and how um, the data should be analysed at the end of the day. Um, luckily for us, demo versions are available for many different software packages, including most of the software that we use in our laboratories, but there is a limitation of these. Um, many of them are time-limited trials with 30 days or 50 days or 60 days, after which time they cannot be reused and cannot be reinstalled. Uh, many have a reduced feature set. Um, the classic feature set reduction is that you can't save from them, so it's very hard to do analysis and then not be able to save your data when you've finished and many of them sadly are incompatible with some of the complex data that we um, generate in our laboratories. Um, the demo versions can only handle limited numbers of data points for instance or can only handle limited numbers of channels that have been recorded using a multi-channel data acquisition system. So we're kind of stuck somewhere in the middle of being able to give the students the opportunity to use the software but at the same time um, give them the opportunity to do their analysis offline. So one solution, of course, is to run seminars. Um, this is a photograph of somebody else at another university, but it gives a good example of the kind of uh, seminars we might uh, envisage setting up with a lecturer with a, a smart board or a pro projector at the front of the classroom and students with their laptops in front of them sat in rows uh, listening diligently to a, an explanation of how to use software applications or how to do your data analysis. This works, of course, very well. Um, 
Unfortunately, we then need to repeat them for every teaching program or every tutorial group. And when you're teaching on up to five different programs with up to 400 students, it's quite an ordeal to give this level um, of teaching uh, to the students. Uh, this is, of course, time consuming. Uh, there are technical challenges, too. Um, not every student can get access to a laptop to be able to play, as it were, in the laboratory or in the practical with you. Um, there are inconsistencies in teaching spaces, even within the King's campus. Sometimes you don't have the same area to teach. And, of course, if we're on a field trip, we cannot guarantee we'll have a lecture space to be able to do this kind of teaching in. And again, we come back to the same problem that every student has a different level of computer literacy and therefore may not be able to keep up um, with every other student in a session like this. So another solution, and the solution that um, I have adopted, is that in fact I do a screen recording or a location video once. Uh, I overdub a voice, which I'm doing uh, in this instance here, and I'm using Camtasia Studio to capture the screen. This thing can then be edited uh, offline uh, fairly quickly. And then the video that results can be uploaded to a video repository. Um, there are many video repositories available. Um, the college has their own Keats online e-learning system. Companies have things like Dailymotion, uh, YouTube, Vimeo. They're popular video streaming um, online resources. And there are other companies I've listed here, Pogo Plug and SkyDrive, which are both online cloud storage solutions, which offer the opportunity to stream video uh, to various um, platforms. Of course, you want a solution that can be streamed to a computer, to a tablet, or of course a smartphone. Uh, and the system that we adopted in our department for our teaching needs was YouTube, um, simply because many of us already have YouTube accounts, uh, which we know very well how to use. It's got uh, quite um, complex, uh, but also fairly simple uploading um, algorithms, you can hide things from the public, you can make things publicly available, you can have private links, um, everything can be indexed and keyworded so you can easily find things online and of course every student uh, at King's College certainly knows what YouTube is because they spend most of their evenings browsing it so we thought that would be a good solution to start with. Um, with a bit of expertise, with a bit of practice, this whole process from the screen recording to the upload can take as little as 15 minutes. So when you've finished your recording, 15 minutes later, this could be live on the internet for students to view. So this is a, just a little example of one of the recordings um, I have done. This is just a, a brief clip. So we click on cyclic measurements. We choose blood pressure as our source. We choose maximum which is the cyclic maximum and then down here we choose what preset um, trace we've got and we've got it's just off the bottom of the screen there we are we choose finger pulse because this is taken from a finger pulse pressure trace you'll notice immediately as I've chosen finger pulse some of the little dots at the big top of the screen here have disappeared where the computer hasn't been able to detect the pulse and this is because we've got this detection adjustment setting here and we want to slide the slider to the left become more sensitive and the right becomes less sensitive. You can see how I've slid it to the right and there are no peaks detected. Go back to the left and it seems to detect all of the peaks and that's brilliant. That seems to have worked nicely so you can scroll through and every peak has been picked up. We change our decimal places to one just because that makes life a bit easier for us. Check that everything is correct. Click OK and now you can see it's plotted a single line which represents the systolic pressure. We're going to come back and check that in a minute, but in the meantime, let's get on with doing diastolic and mean arterial. So you can see that using YouTube, obviously with a screen capture such as this and a voiceover works particularly well for describing how to use software applications, especially if the student can be sitting there in their um, privacy of their own home or their student accommodation with their laptop or their desktop computer. Um, and they can click along and learn how to use the software. So I adopted this policy to use for many different software applications, mainly the ones that we're using um, in the laboratory, but also some of the common ones. For instance, we've done a whole series of um, tutorials online of how to use Excel to analyze data. Um, so you can see here on the screen we've got an example of one of the playlists on YouTube, which is how I started doing this um, tutorial system. You've got um, the video content listed uh, here and you can play, rewind, pause 
and obviously change the size of the video. Down the right hand side there are a list of available videos within this certain um, playlist. For instance this is my KCL tutorials playlist and you can see there's a list here in it and the list goes on 30 or 40 long down the side and you can scroll and choose um, whichever one you want to listen to and watch. Down the bottom is a brief description explaining what that tutorial is about. Um, the one limitation of just using YouTube as, a, as an interface is you get this targeted advertising appearing on your screen and the last thing I want to do is be um, forcing students to look through various adverts. Um, so we decided that YouTube maybe wasn't the best idea and decided to um, use the e-learning um, team at King's to try and come up with a better solution. Um, King's uses WordPress to publish a lot of its online e-learning material and I believe Keats uses WordPress uh, as do other systems within King's. So I was given access to my own WordPress account and um, this is what we came up with. Um, we called it Data Analysis, Presentation and Other Useful Tips and that's the uh, kind of holding title until we think of something a bit more imaginative. But what we've got is we've got a selection of topics, courses, PRISM, which is one of the graph programs we use quite a lot in our laboratory, Lab Chart, which is the um, data analysis and acquisition program we use in physiology, various laboratory skills, a series of lectures, including this one you're listening to now, and uh, Microsoft Office, so using Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and other associated Office applications to help you with your presentation. We've then got a list of the videos. You can see here just the four of them so far from Lab Chart. There are about 30 or 40 Lab Chart videos on this site. And it gives the student options to subscribe to the service um, on the home page. You can enter your email address and receive email updates every time a new video is added. Um, and also you can suggest a tutorial and you'll be surprised how many students have filled this form in and asked for a certain tutorial. In fact, many of the tutorials that are on the website currently are in response to students asking questions. Um, and when more than one student asks the same question, you feel vindicated having a system such as this because, of course, now the students... Um, have all asked the same question you give them all the answer which is a, a very useful thing. So using WordPress, WordPress sorry, you have a very similar view to that on YouTube. Your video is embedded and in fact this is still a YouTube video linked from the YouTube uploads that we already have um, and you see the video content on the left. There are no advertising anymore. Um, we've got description and tags and information down the side here showing that it's a lab chart video and some various data tags and down the bottom we've got very simple navigation where you can go to the next video or the previous video or on the top of the screen you can go back to the subject header. Of course it also tells you how many people have viewed this video which is quite a useful thing for me but also useful to the students to see how um, many other people have, have looked at that video for help. So we've reached more people I think we can say using this system we've certainly reached more people than we could reach by having tutorials. Um, the WordPress site was set up in November 2012 um, and the blog now contains 56 videos covering many different aspects of um, data acquisition and up to five different software programs have been included um, in the description of how to use them in their basic and, and sometimes more advanced uses. Um, but I have to remind people that the YouTube system has been up longer. We had YouTube up and running about two years ago. So it's been around um, 24 months since this um, system was up and running and students have been looking at the videos and I'm really pleased to say that over those two years we've had over 14,000 hits so people have visited the YouTube videos and up to 14,000 odd people or 14,000 views have been made of the videos on the site. The most viewed video which is in fact one of the tutorial videos has been viewed over 1500 times. Um, obviously this isn't all by King's College students but certainly um, a lot of them will be King's College because then we advertise this service through our tutorials and through our lectures. Um, and what's again quite satisfying is that the number of visits to the blog which is the blog that was set up only in November 2012. So it's been up less than a year. We've had over 2,000 vi visits to the blog and 2,000 people have viewed or 2,000 views of the videos we've got on the blog have been um, looked at, which is very satisfying considering that most of the courses we teach on have between 12 and 40 people on them. It means that lots of students have gone and visited the blog and, and taken advantage of these videos. Um, we can deem much more statistical information from these videos and I'll just briefly show you um, a rather complex bar chart which basically lists 45 of the tutorials down the bottom. Um, I said I had 56 but the other 9 are so new that nobody's viewed them yet but we've got 45 videos down the bottom and the number of views up the uh, left hand side. 
and you can see here there's been a number of videos I've just chosen 50 views as an arbitrary cutoff point and a number of these videos have reached more than 50 views which is uh, very satisfying indeed to know that students have viewed them and you can see here there are some videos that have only been viewed 12 times and it's interesting to note that one of the MSc courses I run in which I do some fairly advanced data analysis tutorials have 12 students on them so clearly all of the students have visited uh, those videos to have a look which is great so what do students say about this um, system we've set up? Well, you can see here on the screen various comments. These aren't all comments from King's College students. Some of these are comments from external students who have found the site um, themselves. In fact, one of my own students was in the laboratory the other day telling me that a friend of hers had found these wonderful tutorials online and did I know about them. And when she sent me the link, of course, it was my own website. So that was a student from Reading University who had found the website um, by doing a search on Google. So that's quite satisfying to know it's actually reaching more than just the King's College students. Other students are benefiting, which is, uh, you know, quite nice. So you can have a look for yourselves. Um, the web address is on the screen here, which is http slash slash ehealth.kcl.ac.uk forward slash sites forward slash physiology. Or you can use this um, quick link down the bottom there. Um, and just have a look and see what you think. If you think you want to learn anything new, by all means uh, suggest your own tutorial and I'll uh, see what I can do. So thank you very much for listening.